This is Robert Demers for Con Men here at the New York Comic Con, and I'm here with Al Ewing uh, of uh, 2000 AD and the Mighty Avengers. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, I'm doing very well. It's been uh, it's been a lovely day. Uh, it's been great meeting everybody and all you know all the fans, all the um, all the people. I met a bunch of uh, my fellow writers at Marvel for the first time, so that's nice. You know, meeting those guys. Uh, I've had a great time. I'm really I'm really. Uh, I mean, it started off bad because I had a terrible hangover, but that's gone, and I'm I'm feeling right up there again. So it's all good. How did you get interested in writing comics? Oh, ever since I was a kid, uh, it's something I wanted to do. Because, like, basically, one of the nice things about um, 2000 AD is that they print writing credits, uh, which at the time, at the time 2000 AD started, a lot of British comics didn't. Um, so. It was really nice as a kid being able to follow like your favourite writers and like have favourite writers, and from there it just kind of naturally wanting to be a writer myself uh, of comics or of, or of anything really. I mean, I spent a few years kind of wandering around different genres, different mediums and fields, and kind of you know seeing what fitted. But yeah, that was um, it was something I wanted to do from a very early age. And again, 2000 AD, a huge help. They are one of the few places that will take unsolicited material um, there is a slush pile there's a like a little a little pile that is worked through uh, but you can send in a, a kind of script for a future shock and there is a possibility they will buy it off you uh, so you know that is a really amazing thing that they do that's incredibly important for um, for upcoming talent both at home and and here I mean if there are any if there are any people watching this who Feel like getting into the writing game that's how i got in uh, the other thing i did let me just get this out this is a this is a thing i do i've been trying to do it while i've been here but it's a little it's a little tricky with all the things i have to do you take a sheet of a4 and uh, you fold it you fold it four times like you know like so uh, i'll do this on camera and as you can see i've already i've already partially filled this one in uh, and what you have when you fold when you fold it up, you've got a little 32-page comic with like 32, 32 different panels. Um, I'll uh, so yeah, and then so what you do is you fold it, you photocopy it a bunch of times, then take your photocopies, fold them up the same way you folded the first one up, put a staple in the middle just here, and uh, then kind of snip, snip the edges. And I used to, I used to give those out, giving those out with like your. Um, your details on the back is a really nice because you know people will maybe keep that longer than a business card and so from a network perspective but you know sort of networking it's nice to do it in its own right it's it's a way if you make one of those you are then a comic creator you know that's all it takes a sheet of a4 uh, a pen and a stapler and a pair of scissors that's all it takes to get into comics um, obviously you know the small press but from Little Acorns, John Oaks, and all the rest of it. So I would recommend that. I would recommend that to anyone. Were there any creators that inspired your own works? Uh, I'm a huge fan of John Wagner, obviously, uh, the creator and main writer of Dread. Um, who else in a minute? Peter B. Gillis. Not enough people know about Peter B. Gillis. Uh, he was a writer in the 80s. He did a few things. He did very... I don't know if this is the right word. Esoteric work. Very kind of... He was like nobody before or since. Um, Jack Kirby, as a writer, uh, I'm a huge fan of. Um, he, again, far ahead of his time, uh, far ahead of our time, his, the poetry he put into um, his work was absolutely... And this is, you know, strictly as a writer. Uh, yeah, when I was Roger Stern, um, when I was growing up, he was a, a huge influence. Walt Simonson, again, brilliant uh, I mean there's so many of them there are so many amazing amazing writers at the time uh, Pat Mills if we're going back to the British concert uh, Moore and Morrison obviously uh, Pete Milligan I could just reel off names all day uh, Goth Ennis uh, you know another guy who I really um, uh, I don't think yeah I don't think he's that much older than I mean, he started very young as I remember from his interviews but you know, there's a huge inspiration for you. Started at 19, I think, if I if I remember his interview rightly. Um, so 
there you go. But on the other hand, you know, Alan Moore, I don't think, started until he was 28 or something like that. Um, it took me ages to get any kind of professional gigs. Uh, I mean, there's no there's no time that's too... I'm, I'm running off the track now, but there's no time that is too late or too early to start writing comics. So, you know, everybody should make comics. We should be like, come and put me out of business. Take my job. Steal my job. I beg you. I command you to steal my job away from me. You can do it. Uh, that's that's my message to, you know, who's on the other end of this, this thing. Now, here at the New York Comic Con, there was an announcement at one of the panels uh, revealing the contents of the Trust uh, teaser that was released. Yes. What's the big news? It's a bit of a naughty teaser, Trust, because it's a Loki series. It's Loki, Agent of Asgard. It's Loki getting up to some spy-style, hustle-style shenanigans for the All-Mother of Asgardia. Um, she, they, uh, the three goddesses, give him objectives to carry out. He carries them out for like a little quid pro quo. There's something they can do that he wants uh, them to do. Uh, that'll all be revealed in issue one. Um, and yeah, he's got his own. So, and the, the title of the first issue is Trust Me. And uh, so that's where trust came from. And it's, it's a little, it's a bit of a naughty one because originally we were gonna go with lie. Uh, <laughs> Because every issue is, we're going to be lying to you. We're going to be lying to you a lot with this series. Uh, on page one of issue one, panel one, we kill Thor. We kill him off. He's dead. Um, dead. Dead is dead and he's dead forever. He's as dead as a dodo. Join the Quarren Invisible. We're killing him. Loki wins. Loki first, what, with, a, with a big sword right right up there, right in his back. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's happening. Uh, and I'm not lying would I lie to you so you know there we go that that should give you uh, an idea of how I'm approaching this this comic um, with I'm just gonna lie constantly to you and it's gonna be great you'll love it so the book is going to be uh, it's going to suck right um oh I see what I see what you're doing yeah no it's not it's not bizarro world I'm not gonna like uh, I'm not gonna um, well, I thought will, you were lying then suck. No, I'm not going to lie about everything, just some things, you okay. know. Okay. I've got to, if I was lying about everything, I'm just like, you know, welcome to Cube Planet, me am, me am bizarro, Loki will suck, you know, it's like that. I'm, but no, I'm telling the truth when I say it's going to rock, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, you are going to love it. And yeah, that is the truth, that is the absolute truth. Uh, but I will be telling you a lot of lies, so watch out for that. So. Uh, you're, this is the original Loki after the events of Kieran Gerilin's uh, arc of yeah, the... Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be... Young Avengers readers will be seeing how we get from where young Loki is now to where he will be when uh, my book starts. Um, I, I want to kind of... I realise just showing, just showing him is already... Just like letting people see that lovely Frank Cho cover is already a bit of a spoiler. But I want to kind of keep the spoilers to an absolute minimum because I'm a, I'm a Young Avengers reader and a Young Avengers fan myself, and I know I'd hate it if, uh, if any of it was spoiled. So I'm, uh, I'll just say, keep reading Young Avengers. All will be revealed, you know, very soon now. Within, I think next couple of weeks. I don't know when the, the next one's out, but yeah, it'll all be revealed very soon, and you know, from there. Sorry, weird beep. Anyway, yeah, keep reading Young Avengers, all will be revealed. Uh, so how does this uh, play off with your work on Mighty Avengers? Um, no plans to cross them over as yet. They're sort of, they're very different books. Mighty Avengers is a very high-minded, very noble, very kind of high principle book. Uh, it's very, it's kind of about doing the right thing, about being a hero, about helping people, standing up for people. Loki is sort of much more hedonistic. It's much more um, low down, kind of crafty, uh, sneaky. You know, it's it's still it's fun, but in a very different way. Um, they're two different kinds of fun, um, but they're both fun books. So they could they could cross over for a big fun fest of uh, with you know Mighty Avengers providing the kind of high minded morals and Loki providing all of the, the sneaky naughtiness. So you'll be juggling both books? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've um, I recently finished a couple of things. I recently wrote the last issue of uh, Mars Attacks Just Dread, so there's a... And I recently... I just finished the last episode of Damnation Station, so... Which was years in the writing. So, um, yeah. Uh, there's definitely room for me to be. I'm, in, I'm feeling in a good place with... You know, it's still... I'm not the fastest guy in the world. Uh, there's a lot of plate spinning and juggling and generally... But I'm getting better. I feel like I'm getting better and I'm getting... And I'm very ready to, like, dive hands first into Loki and really... It'll be... Don't ask me which book will be better out of the two. They'll be equally good, but it'll be, like... Fans of Mighty Avengers, I'm sure, will love what I do with Loki. I know I've been enjoying Mighty Avengers, especially that little touch of the spider hero costume. That was a good touch. Yeah, that was that was a happy, a happy little inspiration I had when... Um, Originally, it was going to be Ronin kind of stalking Monica for his own reasons because he needs her for the secret thing that he's talking about in issue one. Um, but then I think Tom had a couple of notes about that, uh, and they were very good notes. And that ended up, it ended up with them meeting in the costume shop. And as soon as I had the beat of the meeting in a costume shop, which was really just like conflating Monica gets a new costume with. Uh, Ronin wants to talk to Monica. It was really just conflating those speaks, but as soon as the costume shop came in, it was like, oh, he's got to put on a bootleg Marvel costume. And yeah, Spider Man was the one I thought, oh, yeah, let's give him a bootleg Spider Man costume. And then Otto can be really offended and it'll be hilarious. Uh, and, you know, the only trouble with that is that everybody now thinks Ronin is Miles Morales and I can't possibly comment. Uh, but you know, um, yeah, I could have made him Wolver Hero, but that might have, yeah. It's I no, I like I love I love Spider Hero. It's gonna be a real. I'm gonna shed a little bit of a tear in issue four when he it's Spider Hero no more. He puts it in a bin and walks away like Peter Parker, uh, and you know the Ronin suit comes on, but. The Ronin suit, he's got a... Uh, I've, I've not seen the art yet. I don't know if, if Greg's got around to drawing it, but he's got a lovely first scene as Ronin, which I'm looking forward to seeing Greg, you know, work his magic on, so that'll be good. When you began the book, uh, why this roster in particular? Um, Basically, Tom Pitch said, yeah, we want to do an Avengers book with kind of these guys we want to we want to do a, a diverse book we want to make it like um we don't want to make a thing out of it but we want to make it like diverse and kind of uh have a high person of color kind of uh con people in there and he basically said we'd really like these people these people and here's some other possibles so i kind of got to pick a choose from like the list um and there were some people that made the cut wolverine didn't make the cut uh he's already on too many teams yeah i i I had no room for him. Um, there was another another guy. I think if I say who it is, that might be a spoiler of somebody else's book. So there's another guy that didn't make the cut. Um, you know, but I had a nice little, lovely. Uh, it's a lovely roster of. Um, I forgot. So what was the question again? I've got lost. Oh, why choose these characters? Oh, why choose these guys? They just fit really well together. Um, they're the they're the kind of eight or nine characters that sort of fit. There's no two of them that I could stick in a room and not have a story happen. I mean, which is just so nice when you've got like... Uh, it's what you want from a team book. You want to have every single... And then after this, you've got like... You know, Jessica is involved. She's she's not like a member. She's like... She's not too keen on like... Uh, she's a little bit like... Mm, about Luke forming the Avengers then. But, you know, she loves him and it's really important to him, so she's like, okay. But, you know, you're not getting in super battles and we're, you know, we're, we're not living in the headquarters. We're not doing that again. Uh, but, she, and you know, and when needs be, she'll step up and she'll punch a robot. That's all happening. And then Iron Fist again. He's not on the team. Um, I kind of don't want to, I don't want it to turn into like a Pan Man Iron Fist book is my meta reason for that. But he's uh, he's not on the team. He's you know he's he's exploring the solo 
thing and like just teaming up with Luke and you know for a guest star is in other people's books right now but he, he comes along it, it wouldn't be a Luke Cage book if Danny didn't turn up occasionally to say hello so you know and it's I don't know I just love all the characters I'm oh, sorry I'm, I'm rambling because it's the end of the day I've, I've got the jet lag it's yeah. like I don't know it's it's nearly midnight by my time so uh, yeah, understandable yeah. Uh, lastly uh, what can we look forward from the Mighty Avengers coming up in the future issues? Okay, well, in issues four to five, uh, it's an Inhumanity crossover, so you'll be seeing a new Inhuman. Uh, you'll also be seeing um, two gigantic new bad guys, organizations, one ancient society from like really like ancient evil I don't want to say too much about them because they're very spoilery but they're ancient they're evil they're kind of a secret like order cabal society almost like you know bit of a mystical threat and then you've got uh, Cortex Incorporated who are like the new uh, they're the kind of new tech company that are like spring up in the Marvel Universe and they've got some very they're also, there's a little bit of crossover with uh, the Infinite Iron Man comic, um, Iron Man Fatal Frontier, because like, they've got a kind of lunar, lunar wing, which is going to be on the moon. Uh, but the main, the main Cortex people are going to be in Mighty Avengers, and you'll be meeting, you'll be meeting the Jason Quantrell, the CEO of Cortex in issue four, and he's, uh, yeah, he's a very, he's a bit of a customer, he's, you know, but um, the the thing with Cortex, uh, how do I explain it in Iron Man? It's like, they're super villains. They're like, if corporations are people too, why can't a corporation put on a colorful costume and take over the world? And just like, legally, just, you know. And how they're doing it is they want to come up with the next big thing, the next big brand, the next Google, the next Twitter, the next kind of, imagine if Google wasn't a verb, you can't anymore. Uh, and they want to change society and control, basically reshape the world through uh, innovations. It's something they want it to be, and they're like, "Yeah, you know, we're 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 super fans. We're fine." But it's like, isn't this cool? Um, and all the superheroes are going. Actually, it's a bit, you know, I'm not sure this is cool. It's kind of freaking me out. So you know, um, yeah, it's like it, it's a kind of co-creation with Kieran Gillen. Um, which once once Iron Man's all over and we've uh, and you know Cortex is well established, we you know we one of us might tell you all about it, but uh, it's yeah Cortex is is co-created with Kieran Gillen, and it was originally it's something that sprang out of the Iron Man thing, and I just love it so much that I I took it to Mighty Avengers, uh, so yeah sorry my throat's going. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for talking with us, and I hope you enjoy yeah. uh, at least getting some rest after the day's done. Yes, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little hopped up. You might be able to tell, but uh, it is. I've had a lot of Red Bull, but uh, yeah, it's been a great con, and it's going to be a great year ahead for Mighty Avengers and Loki and Iron Man: Fatal Frontier and all the 2000 AD stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, thanks very much for uh, taking the time to chat. Thank you.